It's been known for quite a while now that me and Dante Ravioli have a bit of a rivalry. Between speedrun races, randomizer races, and challenge runs, Dante and I have been competing with each other in an epic game in Conquest for quite a while now. After all of these hard-fought battles though, Dante and I have decided to make love, not war. Wait, what? What I meant to say is that we have finally stopped fighting and we're teaming up to take on our greatest challenge yet. Teamwork. If you take the combined efforts of two god gamers and apply it to a single cooperative speedrun, who knows what sort of chaos will unfold. Today I intend to find out, as Dante and I are attempting to learn the Resident Evil 5 co-op speedrun. You could say that I have some experience when it comes to Resident Evil speedruns, but I've never done a run of Resident Evil 5. I have a combined 4,000 hours in Resident Evil games across Steam, but I've only ever played RE5 once on an E8. This E8 would be one for the ages though. And after our first hour of this one, it already lasted longer than the other did. Jokes aside, I've played Resi 5 a few dozen times back in the day on Couch Co-op, and even at times cleared the game in one sitting, but never have done a proper speedrun of it. It's a relatively short game with a chapter-based mission structure that makes it really digestible. We would be attempting to learn a new game amateur co-op speedrun, which currently has a world record of 1 hour and 18 minutes by McAlligan and Curtis. I know what you're saying, but waifu, waifu, that's baby mode. Why don't you play on the professional difficulty since you and Dante are professional gamers? Hush my child, that's cringe. Don't say that. Speedrunning is about speed. We're trying to go fast, not do it right. And in a Petersonian sense, to elevate an alternative sexual archetype, AKA fast as Sheva. But no, that sounds like the least fun thing I've ever done in my life, so we're sticking to amateur. Right from the start, I knew I had to be Chris, as Dante has much more time bonding with Sheva recently. Here was the real test of skill though, our first boss fight. We were all good and I was feeling pretty confident waiting for Ouroboros to appear. That is, until Sheva decided last minute to run at the thing for no damn reason and get grabbed. Really? Oh my god, dude. So their synergy would be a great asset to the team. Well, I have been going to the gym and in an absolute beefcake like Chris. It's important for co-op partners to have good synergy and compatibility with their characters, you know. In order to learn the run and who should be doing what, we're watching a tutorial that my friends Avukamu and DeCosmic made on YouTube. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video, just in case you're interested in learning the run for yourself. The first chapter is really straightforward. Dante and myself are just getting used to the controls and learning exactly where to go and who goes first. Co-op speedruns are all about delegation each team member knowing ahead of time what they are supposed to do, and so you can divide and conquer the level. Okay, and then go. I grab, well, okay, I guess whoever's first opens, and then you grab the herb. Yeah, then the second person grabs the herb, hold the door. Teamwork. Team members managing inventory while waiting for others to reach stores or grabbing items during downtime. The first chapter is basically just running to the end where there is this village holdout section. Unlike RE4 though, this one is just on a timer. There is an executioner that chases us around here, once he opens the gate, we run and grab the machine gun and a ton of grenades. Then I run up into this corner and have him trap underneath the balcony, while Dante runs around and grabbing items. Then, once he's done collecting, we tag team the executioner and steal his lunch money. After a bit of cyberbullying, he drops a big treasure that we'll need for later. He goes down really easy, just two headshots that stuns him, then you knife him a little bit, and then you both beat his ass. I'm not even helping. <laughs> oh, beating his ass, dude, he's done though. After a few cycles of this, he goes down, and we just have to wait for the helicopter to come and save us. We absolutely nail this first chapter and head into the next one. It's all fun and games running from blondes and yelling at each other to hurry. Hurry! hurry, hurry. hurry. That's the best part of the speedrun effort. Until we arrive at a waifu's worst enemy, tentacles. With this team having two waifus, Ouroboros is four times super effective. Thankfully, Dante is a master tentacle handler and gets him right into the fire trap on the first try. This collaboration is going super smoothly, and me and Dante both skim the tutorials ahead of time, so we know at least the early game pretty well. But late game, we don't know that much, as we haven't been able to watch that far into the tutorial yet. The cracks in our knowledge starts to show a little bit as the Ravioli, Bandito, and myself run into a wider array of enemy types. Dogs, explosives, and even trucks. Our unfamiliarity with the game's movement especially causes us to be out of sync quite a bit. I get lost and lose Dante a little bit, but once we regroup at the fence, it's all good. This is where Dante is supposed to shoot two barrels to kill the truck as it runs at us. Then he goes on to shoot the last barrel to kill some enemies, but I rushed ahead too fast and got my ass exploded. Hey, yo. No, it didn't blow up. <laughs> oh no. You shot it once I and it didn't blow up? I didn't. 
This is when I learned that I was in fact the one that let the dogs out. Dogs are free? Baby. Uh, dogs are free? Who let the dogs out? Quick, it was quick, me! Quick, quick. As I run ahead, Dante shoots the locks in front of me so I can open the doors immediately as I get to them. We push people aside and run towards the next section. <laughs> he just pushed that guy over, what a bully. He just fell over. <laughs> this is where I show off my six CSGO skills and throw a few grenades. First over this corner to kill as many enemies as possible, then over the building to try and break a lock on the other side of the door from over the top. All right. That's too low. This actually skips a big portion of the level where you have to climb over the top of the building and throw Sheva across. Now all you have to do is just open the door and kill the chainsaw man with the grenades that you have left over. Finally, we do a few quick time events and finish chapter 2-1. We are flying through this. It only took us 30 minutes to learn and do this entire first two sections. Now we head into the mines, and while it's technically faster to just run through this section in the dark, we opt to have me hold the light for Dante so he can actually see where he's going. It's not much slower. He has faith in me, but I have lost faith in my ability to navigate this game's controls, and I can't figure out how to drop the goddamn light. Oh god, I don't know how to drop it. <laughs> I had faith in you, oh shit. Oh, there we go. I just go pick up. Once we leave the mines, I grab the sniper and have to protect Dante as he runs ahead. I kill the Gatling gun guy and knock down a treasure for Dante to pick up. A lot of the routing comes from grabbing treasures and selling them in late game to buy rocket launchers for the bosses. In early game, though, we just have to kill the bosses legit, but not before a little bit of cheating. Here we do a trick called a tactical reset, where Dante runs ahead and hits the checkpoint trigger while I am collecting treasures and ammo far away. Then I can reload checkpoint to teleport myself to him, saving a lot of traversal time. Right before the boss, Dante sells his pistol and starts mating the new machine gun. He also upgrades it. Now for the bat boss with the big dumper, we kill the boss nearly instantly with our superior teamwork. Well, we would have if I had not missed the sniper ammo pickup earlier. Thankfully, we still kill him really quickly and before he gets a chance to do basically anything. Next, we hit up Tokyo Drift in this awesome auto scroller. Man, I love RE5, but this section is so 2010s it's painful. I don't know why this era was obsessed with driving sections and turret sections. I get it, cars are cool, but I drive an automatic and drive exclusively to the supermarket and back. I don't really need a turret driving section in my game. Thankfully, this trend has died, but now it's replaced by walk and talk, so honestly, I'm not sure what I like less. At the end of the long road, we get to the Gigante boss fight, where me and Dante start blasting. I actually trolled a little bit here and shot the barrels before I was supposed to. You're supposed to save those from when he picks up the telephone pole. Besides that, you just tank all of his hits and then try to kill him before you die. We couldn't quite do that because if we did, we would have died for sure. It was a little terrifying. Okay, I'm ducking. Oh, yeah, I ducked. I was like, we will die if we get hit by that one. Too. I don't want to die. <laughs> we will die if we get hit again. So. This concludes the first third of the game. In classic speedrun fashion, though, we decide that it would be good to practice it. So we started over from the beginning and ran through the whole game up to the Gigante fight once again. The first village holdout was way more scuffed this time around. Dante gets his ass beat by the executioner a few times. But it doesn't actually lose any time since this section is on a timer. We don't take any time to watch the tutorials between missions and we just head into the next one to try and test our memory. Our hentai wrangling skills were once again on point, but I missed my grenade throw and we got cyberbullied in the hallway trying to do it again. Oh I no! I didn't get it! I'm going back. <laughs> I don't like this very much. We had a much cleaner mines though, and I don't miss a single sniper shot, making us have a nice one cycle on the boss. Could be wrong though. Shit. Okay, we should be able to one phase this now. I look so bad. Yeah, but I'm slow, so I probably won't. Uh oh. Oh, there we oh, go. Yeah. Saves on the last bullet. This run back took almost exactly half as long as the first time around, about 23 minutes. Very clean. Now that we are in the swamps of Florida, we are on our way towards the mid and late game. We have to collect three medallion pieces to open a door, but not before I drive into every possible wall in the level. I'll swipe. Oh. That's not a wall, <laughs> but okay, game. <laughs> Look, I never said I was the best driver. We'll figure it out though. Oh my God. Dude, I can do drive by as well on the boat. Oh yeah, you gotta like skim the, the right. I'm here. We made it. Uh, so you're you're driving it like a dream, buddy. Yeah. In real life, I've never been in an accident. But in RE5, the Florida Mobile drives way faster than I ever would in real life. We could grab a few treasures along the way, and I do what I love most about RE5 co-op, yelling at my partner to hurry up. Hurry! Oh, 
Okay. Hurry! I'm, I'm, I'm here. After dodging the gators, Dante grabs some items and makes it to the boat. Then we head to the final piece. After doing a co-op boost up to the last piece, we head on to the one bonus stop before leaving the level. Yeet. We stop by a boat in the middle of the lake to grab the rocket launcher from there. This not only gives us a free rocket launcher, but it also unlocks the rocket launcher in the shop, allowing us to buy more later on. Now, for the next room, Dante lures out some giant mask dudes with his feminine charm. While I run past them and start cranking the bridge down. I have to very strongly resist my urge to let him fall, while he comes around and lets me into the next chapter. Now we split up and Dante cranks a crank while I ride the logs across dodging gators. Once across, we do another tactical restart to teleport me back to Dante. Once in the oil rig, we split up again and search for clues. I almost find a chainsaw in my neck, and Dante finishes the section way before me. Finally, we meet up with Josh and make this run a three-way. Oh god, Josh, Josh, don't you fucking dare. Stay on your Eat. side, Josh. Oh, very nice. Dante and I are tasked with defending Josh while he hacker mans into the mainframe and opens a few doors. Once Josh finishes uploading his consciousness into the neural network, he negotiates with Elon Musk and convinces him to open the door for us. Dante then does a huge brain play and places a mine down by this door so that when the enemies spawn on the way back, they trigger the mine, killing them instantly and breaking the lock off of the door. We then head onto the boat and right into the fight with Irving. Before this though, I buy a rocket launcher, giving both me and Dante one. The era of fighting bosses legit is now over. From here on out, it's rocket time. Resident Evil 5 has a really bad aiming system for its rocket launcher, so what we do instead is aim with another gun, then switch weapons to the rocket and shoot instantly. This allows for much more precise aiming with the rocket, and it shoots way faster this way too. You can instantly kill Irving if you rocket his eye while he's swimming on the side of the boat, then when he chases from behind you do the same thing with a rocket to his face. The side shot is a lot harder though because it's long distance and it takes me a few times to be able to hit this consistently. Now into the ancient temple section, Dante and I are making great pace. It's only been two and a half hours of practice and we're way over halfway into the game. This is just learning and yet we should be done in only a few hours. Hopefully we'll be able to finish learning and do a full run today. Running past our problems and spiders, we split up and collect some treasures before regrouping into this falling hole. Nice. From there, we run past the shield guys and crank out some balls. These balls are random and have a few different patterns. It doesn't matter too much what pattern you get if you get annihilated by the enemies camping you when you leave the crank. I somehow make it in time and this triggers another quick time event of running. This time the QTE is button mashing. Oh great. Honestly, the QTEs are the most likely parts of your run that are going to die. They aren't hard, but they have such weird key bindings in this game, it's so disorienting. A and D at the same time. F and C and V, like what the fuck? We escape the 2010s with a death on my part, and then have to coordinate pulling levers a few times in between managing to grab the grenade launcher. Oh, oh, uh, oh! I, I died. No, I died. I trolled. <laughs> I, <laughs> my bad. I'm not used to goddamn keybinding. Yeah, me too. I was uh, keyboard. This is when we're confronted by the big booty's bigger booty brother. This time we just run away instead of killing him, which I had no idea you could even do until this run. Kind of wild. But it gives you a rather difficult bash in QTE. And I die again. I told you I hate QTEs, man. Oh, come on, man. Why do I have to be there? Keep oh! Wait, what? I was definitely matching up. No, no, yeah, this one, this one's, uh, I remember this one's very strict. Finally, we arrive at the famous Sun Laser section, where me and Dante split up to tactical reset teleport after grabbing each medallion. This makes the section fly by. After this, we have a few puzzles that we have to solve. You have to move these lasers and have them reflect into the right spots. However, the lasers will absolutely blast your teammates, so you have to make sure that everyone is in position so they don't get fired. We blast through this section and head into the lake. At the start of the next chapter, I buy another rocket launcher for the boss and then head through the liquor tunnels. This section of the game is all about guarding your teammate while they open doors. The first door, Dante guards me, and then at the elevator, I guard Dante with the grenade launcher. <laughs> you prick! There's a hostile. Once at the boss, he jumps over my rocket like a legend, and then the second time, I just miss because I'm bad. Once I'm more mentally prepared, I actually hit the boss, instant killing it. Then we buy a few rocket launchers and some flash grenades. The rest of the game, the enemies will have guns, because apparently that's something that happens in Resident Evil now. I blame RE4. The best strategies for these sections is to just flash them like you're in Mardi Gras and want beads more than you want your self-respect. 
The flash grenades aren't very useful against liquors though, so we just run past those. The next big room has a lot of enemies in it, but you can actually skip some of them from becoming aggressive or spawning at all by just not looking at them. Reducing eye contact to a minimum is not only more comfortable, but also fast, apparently. Walking backwards like this skips some of the enemies in this section. But it doesn't stop me from dying, apparently. Ow! <laughs> you bastard! Ah! Oh. I'm dying! From there, we just run past some insects and into the end of the level, where I was supposed to pick up some fire rounds from these barrels, but I completely forgot, and we head right into the Uroboros boss fight. And with another rocket, Dante blasts the hentai right out of his browser history. The next room is full of flashes as Dante and myself run past many gun enemies and giant cockroaches. I send him across the gondola and then reset to despawn the enemies. Okay, reset, reset, reset! I can't yet. <laughs> I was in the middle of getting blown up. Ooh, that was not bad, man. That could have gone worse. Once across, there are two Plaga enemies. I have to finish off with the flash grenades. Then we ride a big, spinning elevator of doom or boredom, I guess. I unload my explosive rounds to clear my inventory, and then we head into the next room where Dante will defend me from endless hordes of liquors while I push a big box to unlock the bridge. Now we arrive at the Wesker fight. Seven minutes. Seven minutes is all I can spare. What the fuck, Dante, stop shooting me. Um, what? He shot Sir? me. Sir? Oh my God, you killed me. <laughs> You bastard. <laughs> the first phase of this fight is actually an auto scroller where you wait for Wesker to open up the side door and eventually just go away. But you can actually skip this section of the fight by shooting a rocket into Wesker, instantly downing him. This rocket shot is really hard though, so it takes a bit of practice and Dante misses the shot a few times. You missed. Now we have to free Jill from her mind control device. This is where we can speed up the process by shooting the device on her chest before pulling it off of her. After six shots, I flash her and then restrain her, and Dante can pull the medallion right off of her in one attempt. It's actually not that bad, but if you mess up too much, you'll actually kill Jill, and that'll be GG. She has like a limited amount of HP. <laughs> you gotta shoot her in the chest, not the face. <laughs> it turns out I actually needed the sniper and I shouldn't have sold it earlier, so I have to buy it back and then buy an extra rocket. We're now on the big boat, and we can do a huge skip here if I have the sniper rifle. By climbing to the top of the tower, I can snipe the dude who normally locks us in a cage and make us do a huge side section. By blasting him from the start, he isn't alive to drop the cage, and we can just continue like he never existed, skipping like half the level. We then head inside and rocket this JJ stealing his keycard. Now for the Excella fight, we have to make our way here through a bunch of hentai, and we're supposed to use the fire ammo to break them and just skip this, but I forgot that ammo, so we had to do it normally. Then, during the actual fight itself, this is where Dante shoots a rocket at one bulb, then I use a solar cannon to break the other, unreleasing the final bulb. Then I instantly rocket that, killing the boss. Not much of a boss, really. We then make our way through a few rooms, kill some JJs, and head into a complete global saturation. The total accumulation of all of our efforts. Only the final boss left. Our collaboration, our teamwork, our partnership, all tested in this final section. Get fucked, Dante. Don't you do it. Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Anyways, once we get to the final boss, we can do a quick kill for Wesker. This was a really hard shot that Dante missed a few times. Stronger better. Oh. oh my god. A few times. Humans have escaped this I think there's was a way for me to jump across. A few times. Okay, he got it, easy peasy. Finally, we shoot him with the rockets and finish the game. We finished learning the whole game in only like four and a half hours. Now it was time to test our newfound talents. How would we stack up in an actual speed run? When we do finally start our run, we clear the first chapter with relative ease, finishing in only nine minutes. We beat Uroboros in the first attempt and speed through the second chapter, 15 minutes. I ended up ahead of Dante at the truck, so I had to shoot the barrels. And that's how a lot of the run works, too. We both have our individual roles, but we could save a ton of time if something happens in the run that would make it faster for us to switch roles and know how to do it on the fly. Switching roles on the fly is a great way to ensure things get done fast, no matter who's in the lead. I nailed the grenade skip, but we almost died to the chainsaw guy. 2-1 is done in 20 minutes. After so much early game practice, I am really comfortable with the first two main chapters. We fly through them with perfect boss fights and not missing any skips. 32 minutes in and we make it to the start of chapter 3. I crash a few times on the Florida Mobile, but we end up going where we need to go and that's good enough for me. Dante successfully dodges some alligators and we collect our rocket before finishing this section. 
When holding the bridge for Dante, the whole village is on my ass, but we made it out in 42 minutes. Oh my god, the big guys! They're both here! Yeah, dude. Oh my god! <laughs> the next few chapters go by pretty smoothly. We get lost once or twice, and we get hit a few times, but no major mistakes. We first try the Irving fight and beat 3-3 in 56 minutes total. The whole time we have not had any deaths, until the quick time event incident. Dante accidentally hits the wrong button during the run, and we die, ruining our otherwise perfect speedrun. Shame. We run away from the big booty bat boy and finish 4-1 in 1 hour and 4 minutes. Up to this point, the one was really simple and straightforward. Just watching someone do it once was good enough to be able to replicate it ourselves. Until the puzzle room. My brain being the smoothest material known to man, I mess up the puzzle and accidentally kill Dante. Shame. I forget to buy the rocket launcher at the start of the mission, so when we get to the boss at the end of the mission, we have to reload checkpoint and then buy it from there. Thankfully, in Resident Evil 5, you can basically use the merchant whenever you want, and it doesn't really lose much time. I kill the boss without missing this time, and we beat 5-1 in 1 hour and 15 minutes. We make it through the liquors and remember to grab the fire rounds before blasting the hentai out of existence. We arrive at Wesker, and this is the make or break moment of this run. Can Dante get the shot quickly? He does. He actually hits it on the second try. Let's go! Shit! That works. Oh shit! That was crazy, but it works. Jill unfortunately has no chill and messes with Dante's aim. He kills her on the first attempt. We get it on the second try though, beating 5-3 in 1 hour and 33 minutes. Heading into 6-1, I need to shoot the guy on the crane I mentioned earlier. But for some reason, when under pressure, I whiff. I swear this never happens in Counter-Strike. Ah, I can aim! The sway is brutal! Oh, fuck. oh, this is not good. I get tased to death and we have to restart the chapter, losing a bunch of time. I eventually hit the shot and we make our way through the level. I have the nades this time, so we skip the tentacle on the way to Excella. Then we finally do the boss and we do it perfectly. Finally, we end up at total global saturation. But before we can get to the QTEs, we have to do a part I haven't explained yet. The second Wesker fight outside at night has a strategy where you instantly rocket launch to the ground in front of him. And if you do it right, you'll get him hit and then he will be stunned. And this time, you can restrain him and then finish the fight instantly. I missed this rocket for about 3 minutes straight before we figured out what was happening. I needed to shoot the rocket a little bit later, and Dante can only shoot Wesker once, otherwise he would break free. Lesson learned for the next run at least. There you go. You're inside me! Uh, what was that? With the QTEs over, all that's left is the final boss. And one last rocket launcher shot. Surely he'll hit it first try. First try. <laughs> it's the survivor stronger and better. Try. Uh, oh shit. First okay, try. I, I tried to skip his cutscene. God damn it. First try. Have a cutscene. Trust me. Second try. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. First try. Maybe if I try his right shoulder. Did that work? Oh, for fuck's sake. After three misses, I think he may have jinxed it. But we finish our first run in 1 hour, 55 minutes, and 55 seconds. For our very first attempt, that was super solid. This puts us in 21st place. Dante and I managed to put aside our differences and cooperate together to create a really cool speedrun. We learned the whole Resident Evil 5 speedrun and did our first run in just about 7 hours. Our first run being under 2 hours long. The run itself was pretty fun and not super involved, but it was really approachable and actually has a lot of work that both players need to put in. Normally, co-op speedruns, one player usually does most of the work, but I felt like me and Dante shared how much we had to do pretty equally throughout the run. We both had great moments and huge jokes. For now, that's going to be all, but in the future, we'll definitely come back and run it again to try to get a better time. Thanks so much for watching and stay stylish.